Hoffman here, host of the Maglite podcast. Great to have you here with us, all of you out in Maglite Nation and in our super fab groups, or maybe those of you that have just stumbled across the YouTube channel. Great to have you here. And of course, I love representing this iconic American brand known for its high quality and strength and always being top of the market in terms of design and usability and durability. So we, of course, at Maglite are extremely supportive of law enforcement. Our first adopters of our flashlights were law enforcement in Southern California. And then the wildfire spread from there. And for decades, we have been supporting law enforcement uh, and uh, we continue to innovate. This is the new MagTac 2. Uh, this is actually designed to be held in a gloved tactical hand. That's why the really aggressive ridging. Um, and I go out and I teach classes to public information officers. And they're always fascinated when I show them this because everybody still thinks of MagLite as this. But we do have lots of different models. Anyway, joining us here, uh, Judy Riley is the president of the National Police Dog Foundation. And of course, who are the most popular police officers? The canines. Everybody loves the canines. And, so, and by the way, Canine Hero just recently, remember that guy that had been on the run, the escaped murderer? Uh, it was a canine that found him. Yes, it was. Um, and when the guy didn't cooperate, he took a piece out of him. So, you know, don't mess with the canines. Just say right. How did you get into this? You know, I got involved. Um, my vet, who's my regular vet with my dogs, um, he and a lieutenant from a local police department, um, they were looking to start a foundation for just that department only to raise funds to start a canine unit. Um, one thing led to another. I want to say that the when this foundation was um, raised, we we funded the first. I want to say, oh gosh, fifteen years that they that they were getting canines. We funded their dogs. We covered. We raised funds to pay for the training and medical. So um, we found out that surrounding agencies were in need of help, and then all of a sudden it became larger, and then states said hey we heard about you guys we need help so we went national a few years after we started i got involved because my vet asked me if i would be interested in joining their forces and i said well what's it about and the first thing he said to me was most canine units most police departments their dogs are publicly funded and i was kind of taken aback by that i said what and that is exactly yeah. why I got involved. What can I do? What can I do to volunteer to help bring awareness and raise funds to help these dogs? I thought most departments had budgets for them and we found out the majority do not. No, it's smaller rural departments, which we have a lot of here Many. in yeah. Washington state where I am. Sure. I'm in a very rural part of Washington state and a lot of departments in this area have four officers, six officers, Correct. and they're just not, there. there is no SWAT team, there is no helicopter, there is no, and they got to cover vast amounts of rural area. And Absolutely. so it is, a, it is a real difficulty uh, for those folks um, to have to do that. So I am thrilled to have your organization out there doing what you do. I, mm -hmm. of course, we're very supportive of law enforcement. One of the things I'd love to do is I'd love to get together with your organization and put your logos on some mag lights. Wow. And then people could buy those lights and then the proceeds would go to support your organization because you're you're completely privately funded, right? We are. We are we operate solely on donations. We are an all volunteer foundation. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. And um, every, well, pretty much every dollar, as much as we can, goes to the dogs, other than some basic operating costs. We want every penny we can afford to go straight to the dogs. And um, our, our mission is to raise funds um, 
at times promote education and um, awareness uh, for the purchase, training, and um, veterinary care for active and retired dogs into their retirement, which is kind of a big deal. So um, as everyone knows, or most know, that when a, typically when a dog retires, it becomes the responsibility of its handler or whoever takes that dog. Most often it's the handler. And, you know, when the dog retires, that's when most of the medical bills come up and that's when they need the most help. And it it's, can be quite costly. And that is another thing that we do is we help with the large emergency um, type of uh, surgeries or expenses that would really be a possible burden on the handler at that time. Well, that's great. I, I love your whole mission of your organization you. and the fact that everything's going to the dogs, being a it dog is. person, being it a is. dog person myself. <laughs> it's one time I could say, I'm glad it's all going to the dogs, uh, <laughs> which is usually not a good thing. But in this case, fantastic. Yeah. Judy Riley, uh, we've got to talk more offline. We'll get something set up where yeah. Maglite like support your organization yeah. and people can show their support. Thank you very much. That's pretty awesome. Which I very think uh, a, a lot of people would. Yeah. All right. Maglite Nation, thank you for being here. Till next time.